Traveling is one of those things that you can overcomplicate very quickly. And if you've watched my last everyday carry video, you'll know that I like to keep things realistic and minimal on an everyday basis. So I thought I'd share what I take with me when I'm traveling and maybe it'll help you cut down on the 70 suitcases you bring for your day trip in London. Let's get started with some of the items that I carry on my person when I'm traveling before we get into the bigger items that are in the bag. First, we have my iPhone. I'm still using my iPhone 15 Pro Max with 256 gigabytes of storage. It has been a fantastic phone so far. It looks the part and also acts as a main camera rig when it's too awkward to bring my Fujifilm X-T5. It is no issue capturing fantastic images. It never leaves my side and nowadays, depending on where I'm going, I can almost entirely eliminate my wallet when traveling thanks to Apple Pay. It also stores all of my itinerary from my plane tickets to getting into the hotel on the other side. It really has eliminated the need for printing things out and it makes me glad that we're moving towards a more digital world for the convenient things just like this. That said, I've included my wallet in this video as realistically I take it everywhere on my travels. Just in case I need my card to get cash or my phone has died for whatever reason and I need to pay for something. I find this coach wallet to be fantastic. It's fully leather and smells fantastic even years later on. It has room for all of my cards and plenty of cash should I need it. I always thought traditional wallets were the way to go. When I seen people using those small compact wallets, I never really liked them or the small form factor for whatever reason, but I've started to realize the benefit of those compact wallets and maybe those of you who are actually using those are onto something. It's particularly noticeable, especially if you're wearing comfortable clothes to the airport when traveling. It isn't ideal to have a massive leather wallet sticking out of your pocket or weighing you down. If I'm not traveling or only going on short haul flights, I don't even take my wallet and just have the phone with me. It's hard to go back from that to using a fully weighted wallet, so we'll see how many more years it lasts. Along with my iPhone and wallet being on my person, I also keep my AirPods close to hand. I'm still rocking the Gen 1 AirPods and they've been perfect for me since I bought them back in 2018 or so. They're the perfect choice when you want to pass some time listening to music or a podcast in a busy airport terminal. They've also been fantastic for me in other aspects of my day, whether I'm cleaning the car or sitting at my desk at work. I'm planning on upgrading these to the AirPods Pro shortly, but should I hold out for potentially a newer model later in the year? Let me know in the comments. Moving on, I always wear a watch. Depending on the occasion, location and what I'm wearing, I'll decide which one is best as it has to match what I'm wearing, obviously. Watches are always something I've been into and I truly think every man should have a nice watch. In a world where everything is digital, it's nice to stop and appreciate mechanical greatness once in a while. If you're into cars like me, you'll know that watches are fairly closely related and I'd highly recommend getting a great Swiss watch if you haven't already. I will warn you that it is a dangerous rabbit hole and quite an expensive hobby to pick up, so try it carefully. Next, always on my person, is probably the most important document when you're traveling and that is your passport. I know a lot of people have special sleeves and stuff that they keep their passport in. I'm not really that kind of person. I have it in a plastic sleeve and that, that's just enough for me. If you've ever been at an airport and had the panic onset of not being able to find your passport, you'll know that you want it easily identifiable in an instant. Let's move on to the items I don't keep directly on me, but do come with me in my carry-on bag. First off, my MacBook. Now, it's not every trip that this laptop comes with me. However, it will if I need to get some work done while I'm away. It's a late 2017, early 2018 MacBook Pro. And if you'd like to know why you shouldn't buy a base model MacBook and how I made that very mistake, check out this video here. I plan on upgrading this shortly to potentially the new M3 Air or the now reduced price M2 Air, mainly for how light the Air is, the portability factor, the new M chips, and the fact that the MacBook Pro battery that I have is shot now and I need to have it plugged in at all times to use it. It's definitely starting to show its age when it comes to performing even the most basic tasks, but regardless, it's still a great choice if I need to get video scripts done on the go or want to watch a film while staying in a hotel. So keep an eye out for a video coming on that at a later point. Accompanying me on nearly all of my trips is my iPad. This is the sixth generation and I have it roughly around the same time I bought my MacBook Pro. This is also a complete base model and I have the Apple Pencil that I use to take notes and compared to the MacBook Pro this is not showing its age and I do not regret buying the base model at the time. Sure it's a little slow here and there but it's still perfect for taking notes, watching YouTube, playing games and I definitely don't feel the need to upgrade. The one thing that's starting to show its age is the thicker bezels but I can live with that for now. It makes me think just how good the newer iPads must be if this one is still alive and well. I think it's almost impossible to compete with Apple when it comes to the tablet market and if you have an iPad you'll know exactly what I mean. Since I bought my first proper camera, the Fujifilm X-T5, it's been on nearly every trip that I've went on. The iPhone camera is great and all, but once you have a proper camera, you always get the feeling, I wish I had my camera with me right now to capture a particular moment that the iPhone just won't cut it. If you're thinking about getting into photography and have an interest in taking photos or have a vision anytime you're somewhere and trying to compose a photo, but are scared to take the leap, I recommend just jumping right in. The good thing about the camera world is that most have a pretty decent resale. So if you don't like it, you can always sell it and move on to the next thing. I may consider doing a video about this camera, but only once I've gotten more experience with it. So again, 
again, keep an eye out. Now, the bag. This is just a simple over the shoulder bag. It's black and gold and has plenty of space for all my devices along with clothes for a short stay somewhere. I think it's invaluable having a bag that will fit everything and also be easily taken on board with you and put under the seat in front of you. I actually had to buy this bag when I was on a day trip in Edinburgh as the bag I took with me died a sudden death on me and I needed a new one in a hurry. It was a cheap one from Primark in Edinburgh but a year and a bit later and it's still in good shape. If you'd like to see what my day to day everyday carry looks like check out this video here or if you'd like to check out if you should buy the M2 Mac Mini in 2024 check out this video here. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. Oh, 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 oh,